Hello and welcome once again to Hardly Tech. Today we're taking a look at a performance comparison between the RTX 2080 Super. Specs listed above, I'll give you a moment to check those out. And the RTX 3060 Ti in ray tracing at 1080p. Again, specs above, give you just a moment to look those over. And here are the specs for today's test bench. Today's ray tracing games will be Dirt 5, Doom Eternal, Metro Exodus Enhanced, Resident Evil Village, and Cyberpunk 2077. How much dirt could a dirt chuck chuck if a dirt chuck could chuck dirt? Dirt 5. All settings in Dirt 5 are on ultra high, resolution 1080p, resolution scaling off, ray tracing on, of course. Here in Dirt 5, we're not seeing a huge difference between the 2080 Super and the 3060 Ti. During the section near the beginning of the track, the 3060 Ti basically matches the 2080 Super. After the first couple of corners, the lead shifts to the 2080 Super, anywhere from 1 to 6 frames per second, usually in the 1 to 3 FPS range. Interestingly, we can also see the 2080 Super utilizing about an extra gigabyte of system RAM, while also pulling about 10 watts less from the CPU. Overall, this is pretty impressive to me considering how many fewer RTX cores and TMUs are available on the 3060 Ti compared to the 2080 Super, and using about 30 to 40 watts less power for the GPU.
In Doom Eternal, all settings are maxed out. Ultra Nightmare, 1080p. DLSS off, ray tracing on. The only outlier is texture pool size set to ultra because these cards only have 8 gigabytes of memory. Doom Eternal flips the script a little bit. We see at the beginning that the 2080 Super and 3060 Ti are pretty close. Once we get into the action though, we start to see that the 3060 Ti holds about a 5 to 10 frame per second lead over the 2080 Super in comparable scenes. We also see that the 2080 Super is utilizing about an extra 5 to 600 megabytes of system RAM and a couple extra 100 megabytes of GPU memory. And this time, the power usage is much closer, only about a 20 watt difference. Dang it. My voice is fogging up. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of Metro Exodus. Here in Metro Exodus, everything is maxed out, ray tracing on, DLSS and VRS are both off, hairworks, physics, and tessellation on. Here in Metro Exodus, we see the 2080 Super once again take a bit of a lead over the 3060 Ti. The 2080 Super maintains about a 3 to 5 frame per second lead for the majority of the test. We can also see that the 2080 Super is using an extra 40 to 50 watts though. So if you're planning on building a low power consumption build, I might steer toward the 3060. It's impressive just how much performance we get out of the 3060 Ti at such a low power target. In any case, both of these cards offer a very playable performance at max settings. So if you're rocking a 120Hz display and you've got variable refresh rate, this is a great game to show it off and have excellent ray tracing. Wait, the storage upgrade costs how much? Are you nuts? Uh, only in Resident Evil Village. Settings in Resident Evil Village are once again set to maximum. 1080p, variable rate shading off. Here in the opening village portion of Resident Evil Village, we're seeing the 2080 Super maintain about a 1 to 3 frame per second lead over the 3060 Ti. So again, nothing super meaningful. However, once again, we see the 2080 Super using an extra 50 watts over the 3060 Ti. Inside Castle Dimitresk, we're seeing about a 3 to 5 frame per second split in favor of the 2080 Super. And once again, that extra power usage. If you've got a high refresh monitor, this is another great game to show off ray tracing with maxed settings at a good frame rate. <laughs> Hey, where's Daft Punk? Someone told me they're in Cyberpunk. Anybody? Cyberpunk is a bit too much for these cards maxed out. All of the main settings are set to maximum, however ray tracing is set to ultra and DLSS is set to balanced. Cyberpunk 2077 is another title that swings in favor of the 3060 Ti. The 3060 Ti holds about a 1 to 3 FPS lead over the 2080 Super, so nothing major, but a difference nonetheless. This time the 2080 Super is only using about an extra 10 to 15 watts over the 3060 Ti, but we see the 3060 Ti using an extra gigabyte of system RAM, and about an extra half gigabyte of GPU memory. 
With the 1080p comparison finished, let's talk about the differences in the results. Architectural differences between these cards aside, I feel like the 3060 Ti could very easily match or surpass the 2080 Super if they were at the same clock speed. In the rasterized gaming test suite, we saw about a 5-10% difference leaning in favor of the 2080 Super. In ray tracing titles, however, it is much, much closer. Close enough in some cases that you could almost consider it margin of error, save for the fact that these tests were run multiple times. So I think the main takeaway is if you can get a 3060 Ti at a reasonable price and you don't already have a card that's near this performance level, this would be a great upgrade option for you. You get performance very close to the 2080 Super for a lot less. Well, in theory, a lot less and at about 80% of the power target. So, in the next video, we'll be comparing these two once again at 1440p to see if we can cause any major difference in performance between these cards. How well do you think the 3060 Ti is going to hold up at 1440p? Let me know in the comments. This channel was born out of those questions that never really seem to get answered concerning hardware configurations and software testing. So, let me know what you've been wondering about down below. I, for one, have enjoyed making this content. If you've enjoyed these videos and found them useful, please hit that like button and subscribe. It would really help me grow this channel and continue this tech adventure that we're on together. Well, that's it for this episode of Dragon Ball... <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.